Well, hello there, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Anecologist Plays, the channel where we are learning more about nature by playing games. And we are back in Ark Survival Evolved, as you can see, and as you can see from the thumbnail, our objective is to go down into the depths, because we are going to, hopefully, go and tame a creature that is down there and talk about it for a bit. But in order to do so, we do need some sap, and I need to fly all the way over to the lovely little redwoods there, to actually go and do that. So I'll be back with you in a moment. Now Tuesdays are of course normally the day when Nick and I do the video on small land survive the wilds but unfortunately she also was a little bit sick and I decided to give her a bit of a break uh, so we are going to record that video this evening and then release that on Friday. As it is, it is early on Tuesday morning and I am quickly making our Ark Survival Evolve video here. Now that we have acquired our sap though, we are just going to go straight on back. We already have the rare mushrooms that we also need for a little recipe we are going to be making. And hopefully we also have some large eggs waiting for us. Alright, I do believe we have everything we need. We have got our three large eggs, we've got three prime meat jerky, we've got some rare mushrooms, we've got sap, we've got fiber, and we've got water and a citronal as well. So if we just switch it on it should give us there we go superior kibble so this is the second type of kibble that we are now making we have previously made regular kibble and in this case superior kibble will hopefully help us nab the next creature now it is currently night time so i don't want to go down there when it is dark or when it is night out so instead i've got a little surprise here so i've been doing a lot of fishing in the game here and i have as a result Obtain some Mastercla Mastercraft scuba flippers, the scuba mask, and also the legs, the scuba leggings, uh, the blueprints for those. So I've made these, I'm ready to go down into the deep. I have not obtained for the scuba tank. I'm not sure whether that is obtainable or not, but I have not obtained it yet. I also have got the apprentice crossbow, which is better than the primitive one that we used to have. And then also, I have obtained the blueprint for a Mastercraft long neck rifle. And I have also then actually accumulated all the things we need in order to make it. So, let us craft a nice Mastercraft rifle. It takes a lot more resources to make, but I think the durability is much higher and the damage also will be much higher. Ooh, it's even better because of our crafting skill over here where it would have come out at 211%, it's actually 213.7% damage, so 2.6% more damage than we would normally have gotten from it. That's actually quite nice. Man, okay. And then, we are also going to equip our crossbow there. Initially just with normal crossbow bolts, because as we go into the water here, we may encounter some cnidaria, which are like jellyfish-like creatures. Now, cnidaria are in essence a group of creatures that have stinging cells, and that is what they are known for. It includes things like jellyfish, blue bottles, or Portuguese men of war, all those types of things. Before we actually go in, we need to equip our scuba gear so that we don't freeze to death and so that we can actually breathe down there without worrying. Now, interesting, the reptiles in this game, like the Sarcosuchus here, should actually be breathing air. But if we go down there, you'll see at the top there, there's no oxygen meter for them, nor is there an oxygen meter for us. Now, we are just going to go down, and the nice thing is we can actually shoot with the crossbow off the back of our Sarko. But there is our quarry. That is what we are actually after. But there are also, as you can see down there, a whole bunch of Nideria. Now, that is, like the game calls it a plesiosaur. Now, plesiosaurs are a wide range of creatures. That can, it can actually be a variety of creatures known as plesiosaurs. This is, however, Elasmosaurus, which is the one which had the longest neck. The longest necked plesiosaur of all the plesiosaurs. So we are just going to hopefully get its attention. Oh, there are some 
Chucky Shocky eels down there as well. I think we are being chased, yes. Just need to keep an eye out that there are no megalodons in the area. We're just going to keep on doing this. Ah! It is unconscious. Now what we also have is a Basilosaurus. Oh! Uh, is that Dunkleosteus? Yes it is. Okay. Now what we need to put in here is actually this. Let's just try to get this tamed. Oh! Goodness, no, 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 no. Megalodon, leave us alone. I do not want you attacking our plesiosaurus. Oh, another one. Hey, you also want a match. Yeah. And Uncle Osteus, you also want a bite. Yeah. Okay, right. This is a very, very adventurous little episode down in the deeps. And we're not even in the deeps yet. Uh, let's just check here. Uh, yeah, Sarko's health is brilliant. Well, Sarko, Sarko Sam over here did take out an entire... Uh, oh, is that... That's Lee Zichtis. That's Lee Zichtis over there. Oh, my word. Okay. Very interesting. Now, I do want a Basilosaurus. I did not know... The Basilosaurus was this close to our base. Ooh. Now that is marvelous. We are going to tame Basilosaurus at some point. The early whale. One of the largest, if not the largest predatory whale of the uh, prehistoric era. Hmm. Don't like the mantas. If the mantas aggro to the plesiosaurus, never mind. Come plesiosaurus, we're going home first. At least just going to put you into a little cryopod. Then we'll sort everything out. Didn't even check what level he is. Level 11. Really? Really? Oh well. You probably have gone for a better level one, but that may have required a far more kibble. Now, before we actually do anything else, let's just quickly look here at this Dunkleosteus. Because Dunkleosteus was an amazing fish. This is Dunkleosteus, right? Yeah. So Dunkleosteus, what was known from it was actually only really the head. It didn't really have any, well, any of the back parts of this fish. And it is one of the placoderms, one of the armored fishes of the Devonian period, and was probably one of the most feared predators in the ocean at that time. So with this fish, you can see here the massive teeth that they had, uh, very weirdly shaped, but perfect for shearing through other armored fish because at that point in time most of the fish were in fact armored fishes or the, the majority of the top fishes at least were armored fishes but this thing was estimated at I think around six to nine meters six to nine not 69 meters but nowadays recently I think like a month or three ago there was a new study that came out that showed that well maybe this thing was only Mm, about half that size, so only from the head up to about here. So a much more compact fish, and that was based on a new way of estimating it. So previously, they were looking at, well, okay, well, let's estimate the size of this extinct fish, which we don't have anything for, based on just the skull, and they estimated, well, maybe it was this size. Uh, but nowadays, what they looked at was the distance from the eye to the operculum. So the operculum would be where the gills would be. So the lid would, would be actually about there. But they were looking at that eye to operculum lid distance and compared that with all kinds of living and extinct fishes, including other placoderms. And looked at species that they had more fossils for and more accurate lengths. And then based on that distance from the eye to the operculum, they estimated that instead of six to nine meters, this thing was probably like three and a half 
to maybe four meters in length. Much smaller, half the size than initially thought, but still, it's still a big fish. It's still the size of a moderately sized great white. Okay, now we have finally done our first little journey into the deep and we are just going to quickly come on land again here. There we go, that's better. Oh my word, you are beautiful. Okay, let's have a look and see what we need for a saddle for our Elasmosaurus and then we will sort that out. Okay, now of course I'm going to make a platform saddle because why on earth not? So we need cementing paste, fiber, hide, metal ingots and silica pills. I think the silica pills are the only thing that is limiting at the moment but there should be some down in the depths. So we may need to just... No! No! What on earth is happening over here? I have got no idea what was here, apparently, that everybody had to run out and go and attack it. Stay here. Being silly. You silly goose. Okay, Sarko Sam should be okay, but I'm going to... Get him in any case. And where on earth is our plesiosaur now. I think our plesiosaur is gone. Um, well, I knew I should have put him back in the cryopod. So I guess we're going down to, into the deeps to go and look for silica pearls. So that when we do get one again, oh is that, is that him? Yeah, that's our plesiosaur. Okay, fine. I guess. I'm not sure why on earth you want to be out here, but okay. Okay, we have not lost it. Thankfully, not yet at least. Now as we descend into the depths here, we thankfully have remembered to put on our scuba gear. But we now do have to look out, not only for things like Megalodon and all those lovely sea creatures, but we also have to look out for these Cnidaria, because they, they will swarm us, and if they hit Darko Sam, it's basically over. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump off here. And use my fists to quickly just grab some silica pearls and then get back on Sarko Sam. Yeah, just in time. <laughs> and then basically get ready to head out again. What is that creature? Is that Dunkleosteus again? No, that's an anglerfish, isn't it? That's an anglerfish. Interesting. Okay, now they would be one of the best to actually mine this with, silly couples, but we're not going to go for them now. We actually have a lot to talk about in the ocean here. We are going to be doing that next time. For now though, I'm going to go up to the surface, where the silly Nideria can't get to me. But first, I am going to just quickly freeze my Elasmosaurus, so that he doesn't head off in his own direction. I don't want him to go his own way. Is that another anglerfish? That is another anglerfish. That one's dead. That one is probably died of like astonishment or something. Now, let's see whether we can make ourselves a nice plesiosaur saddle. Yes! A platform saddle. Now, although you may think that you can actually build a nice airtight base on it, you cannot. If you swim around on it, you still need your scuba gear. Otherwise, you are going to die and it's not going to be pleasant. So, let's equip this now. Okay, interesting. Now, we do need to be able to breathe underwater. There we go. Our oxygen content is going back up. Wow, look at this. Now, it's going to take some time getting used to the hitbox of where on earth it hits. Quite a wide turning circle. This is almost a turning line. 
nonetheless, this is quite a cool creature. Anyway, let's talk about Elasmosaurus. Because this creature, unlike some of its earlier relatives, would not have been able to actually get out of land or go out of land due to these flippers over here not really having the strength the the girdle the pelvic girdle and then also the uh, place where the fl front flippers attach not strong enough to actually haul this massive two-ton creature out from un out of the water so they were completely aquatic and as a result they didn't lay eggs they would have given birth to live young born either wrapped up in a little bundle or head lost but yeah the proportions of this it is in the dossiers it is said to be elasmosaurus but it's not correct the proportions elasmosaurus yeah it could have been this length so this species would have been about 10 meters long roundabout so about 30 feet just over 30 feet 33 feet more or less actually and two-thirds of that would have been neck and head so the plesiosaurs were part of a larger group of marine reptiles. They were not dinosaurs, they were marine reptiles. They split off from the group that would contain the dinosaurs much earlier. So they were not closely related at all. But they were, they were the plesiosaurs, which were the long-necked variants with the smaller heads. And then they were the pliosaurs, which had much shorter necks and much larger heads. Very similar to mosasaurs. They were things like chronosaurus and things like that. And when we one day play Jurassic World Evolution 2, we are going to have a look at things like chronosaurs and pliosaurs and all those types of things as well. But the plesiosaurs here containing all kinds of long necks, things like Elasmosaurus, which we have here. Also, the namesake Plesiosaurus actually being a genus within the plesiosaurs. So that is also just to add to the confusion. If we talk about Plesiosaurus, it's a specific genus of plesiosaur if we talk about plesiosaurs it could be anything like elasmosaurus here and plesiosaurus and all of those that belong to that group but the elasmosaurus here most likely could not have tilted its head very far the movement we see here is pretty much as it would have done it it wouldn't have been able to turn too much more well it couldn't actually have turned upwards i'm not sure whether we can yeah we can't really get this yeah, oh, that, yeah. Okay, so it wouldn't have been able to lift its head like that. The transverse process, which is the top part of the uh, vertebral bone, that actually was too tight-fitting to allow the neck to go up. It could have gone down a little bit, but it couldn't go up. It couldn't quite bend the way it does in this game, not upwards at least. But there were early depictions of this creature, including the guy that named it, that kind of, to some extent had this fancy of it lifting its head like a swan and it was discovered and named by none other than Edward Drinker Cope which was the uh, one of the two in the Bone Wars and then what he did however was a bit of a, a oopsie he when he reconstructed this creature he didn't put the head on the neck no 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 he put the head on the tail end of the creature gave it a short neck with a nice little head there and then a very long tail and then marsh made fun of him and really like hammered in how wrong he was by putting the head on the tail and oh dear how dare he make a mistake like that and so what we are going to be doing here now we are going to be naming him drinker's bane because I like the Bane reference there because it's kind of like Durin's Bane, like Lord of the Rings. And Drinker because Edward Drinker Cope. Uh, because this is Cope's Bane. Uh, what a fun little thing. Right, so the question then is why on earth did Elasmosaurus in particular have such a long neck? It was probably to do with hunting, but not necessarily in the way you may expect. It was not to sweep to the sides to grab their prey. Instead, it was most likely to sneak up on prey. If you are a little fishy and all you see is this head coming towards you, you don't see the back end there, you just see this head coming towards you, you may not really be too worried until it is too late and this creature is swimming up to you 
quite fast. So the long neck was most likely a way for the plesiosaurs and in particular elasmosaurus to kind of sneak up on their prey so that they didn't realize that they were in danger before it was too late. And in Lasmosaurus, as I've said, two-thirds of the body of this creature would actually have been neck. Really a cool creature that they brought it into the game, but I am to some extent saddened by the fact that they didn't have a longer neck in the model here, because that is characteristic of Elasmosaurus. The way it is here, it is just a plesiosaurus. It's not an Elasmosaurus. Elasmosaurus, meaning thin-plated lizard, uh, that one was really the long-necked thing. That I mean, that's what it was known for. It's the one thing it is known for. Nonetheless, a very cool creature to have, and I'm glad that we have now officially tamed one. We have done our little journey to the deeps, guys. And we have finally made it. Now, we are going to, next time, I guess, go down even more and see what else we can do. But for now, we are just going to go back to dry land, where things are safer. So thank you once again everybody for joining me on a little adventure over here where we have gone into the depths a bit. Next time on Friday we will be doing the Small Land Survive the Wilds episode with Nick and I. And then on Saturday hopefully everything will be back to normal in terms of streaming Subnautica. And then hopefully on Saturday we will be making the progress I had hoped to make previously. So until next time then everybody, stay safe. Bye. We'll see you all soon. Goodbye.